Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynn, and I want to welcome you to my channel if you're new. And if you're not, welcome back. Um, on this channel, I do all kinds of different crafts and whatnot and do some homesteading. I asked on my last video if, you know, because I was getting so much more response from the fiber art side, I asked you know, for y'all's opinions and advice, if you'd want to see more of that content versus the homesteading. I didn't get as big of a reply response as I thought I would. So for now, I am going to focus more on the crafting side and sprinkle in some of the homesteading stuff as it comes up, like when I'm starting to can um, from my harvest and, and whatnot. So I will have stuff coming in and, you know, if I, I want to try a different recipe or um, share something with y'all in that respect, you know, I can do that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and, oh, sorry. Um, I said in my last video that I was going to participate in that. Um, highway 23 yard sale uh on a the friday and saturday and i did so today is sunday that i'm recording this so i can get it uploaded tomorrow and i'm a tired turkey and my poor husband he went with me and <laughs> i think he's more exhausted than i am but you know i enjoyed it for the most part it was a lot of work um for not a lot of gain but I knew going in that it might not work. It might I might not find the people that are interested in the stuff that I make along this because this goes from and, and you can look this up and see exactly how long I can't remember the mileage, but it goes from Modoc, South Carolina, all the way to Batesburg, Leesville, South Carolina along this um, stretch of road called Highway 23. So a lot of people want to just clear out their houses and stuff, and, and it's just this one gigantic yard sale. And people are going looking for those type things. So it's not always... Um, I did get a lot of great compliments, but it's not always something they're looking for in that kind of a bit, you know. But, and I sold a couple things. Um, I think I'm a, uh, if I do this again, and that's a very big if, because as, as us cr yarn crafters know, <laughs> um, you don't get the value of your makes, you don't get the money out of them unless someone really appreciates it, um, you really don't. And it, that's okay for me. It, it's therapy. It's something to keep my hands busy, you know. Um, like I said before, I quit smoking eight years ago, and it, it has helped, you know, to give me that relaxation that smoking used to, um, unless I'm trying a difficult, intricate pattern and then I really want a cigarette and <laughs> it doesn't help that much but you know it, it is what it is so like I was trying to explain to my husband because he thought I was grossly underpricing and and he didn't understand my pricing structure at all but it was and I tried to explain to him as long as I can keep myself in yarn I'm happy as long as I can buy more yarn to make more stuff I'm good, you know. Um, it, it, the hobby doesn't have to make me money. I don't like it to cost me money, but so far it has. Because, <laughs> you know, who can pass up a good deal on yarn, right? <laughs> I can't. Um, and I'm staring, I'm sitting here staring at my yarn knowing this. But the makes that, I, that come from these yarns aren't going to waste. Um, if I can't sell them, I can donate them, you know, so, or I can give them away as gifts. 
So to me, it's not a waste, but I do want it to at least pay for itself somewhat, <laughs> especially now that I'm, I'm not working anymore. Um, but I know I told y'all, like, I was helping my niece move last weekend, and then this weekend we had the um, the big market yard sale thing. So I haven't got a whole lot done. I did weave in the ends to my daughter-in-law's cover-up that I showed on my last video. Um, and I'll post that link at the very end of this video. You'll see it. You can click on it um, on the screen because I'll, I'll post that one. Usually I like to put the previous video on the end of my current video just in case you missed it you can always click back and you don't have to go searching through my playlist or whatnot oh note to self I do need to do that let me write myself a little note I do need to start making I have enough videos now that I need to, to try to divide them into playlists but the now what I'm going to show you right now is not a current make. This, me and my daughter-in-law, um, she first started to learn to crochet, and I was helping her. I was teaching her, you know, some of the tricks that I knew, and and she had the idea of us doing a project together. I mean, not working on the same project, but her doing one and me doing one. How can I say it? Her doing a blanket and me doing a blanket. Okay, same pattern and everything, but we would just be doing it, you know, like a, a crochet along type together. So I had this hanging on my tent, and I will, you know, it 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 was for attention mainly because it's such a beautiful piece, and if someone would have bought it, they would have paid dearly for it. <laughs> But I could, oops, I hit my microphone again. I could, I can remake it. I don't want to remake it. Because while it was fun and, and I enjoyed the time, it really helped us get to a different level of our relationship. Um, and it, it was a good bonding time for her and I. But, so this was done, I want to say 2018, 2019. And I'm going to try to hold it up so I can show you. And if I keep hitting my microphone, I am sorry. But it is a white unicorn with a rainbow background. And then hearts at the bottom. Now this is a corner, a corner to corner graph, and it is called the heart sprinkle cow or crochet along. And we did this. I joined her face group, and I'll the lady's name is Crystal Joy, and I'll I'll link the Facebook group down below. Um, Because through the Facebook group, you can actually do it for free. You can get the pattern for free. I mean, she has it on her website in a, in a downloadable pattern and all. But um, let me show you. Now, this is her um, Facebook group. And if you'll go, you know, right here. If you'll see that they have um, things across the little headers across the top. Oop, I'm trying to scoo scooch. And if you can go to files, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm right. Yeah, there we go. You can go to that link, that little thing right there. You can click on it. And I think it's down at the very bottom. It's the, um, the unicorn corner to corner. I will post a picture, I don't know which way, that I'll get my son to add it, um, of it when it was hanging on my tent, so you can kind of get the full view of it, but 
it was, I enjoyed this blanket and I'm sorry it's not a current make, but I really wanted to share it with y'all because I had thought I was going to save it um, if I ever have a granddaughter, you know, that I can give this to her. And I still, I'm, I'm still probably going to keep it for that purpose because this was definitely a labor of love. Um, it was, it, it, it took a minute and I enjoyed it immensely, but I don't see myself redoing it again unless I have to. I mean, you know, if I do sell it and I make a lot of money off of it, then yeah, I'll, I'll sell it. But it was mostly so that I could pull people's attention away from, you know, so much of the household kind of stuff to what they're like, oh, wow, look, you know, and, and I did get a lot of attention from it. I did ask, I did have one lady ask how much I would charge for it when I told her. She said, yeah, I figured it would be something really high. Uh, and if I had the extra money, I will, I would. But um, in the end, you know, you can see I brought it home with me. And another one was that peppermint, pe the, pe the, the peppermint um, little afghan that I showed y'all that I did from um, Yarn Inspirations that Mikey had shared with us a while back. Now, if you cannot get her pattern, the Heart Sprinkle um, Unicorn, if you cannot get her pattern for free, I am sorry. It was free back then. Um, and I still have all the files from it myself. I, I can't share that with you because it, you know, if you can't access it free, I can't give it to you free because that would be cheating the designer. And I, I'm not about doing that. You know, um, there's enough free patterns out here for us that we can enjoy them without taking away from these, these lovely people who sit down and design these. But there's so many patterns that I have, and I download them when I come across them. Sometimes I download them in a uh, PDF file. Sometimes I have to print them out. Sometimes um, I can link their website into my bookmarks, you know. But the one thing about the bookmark thing is I... if if they close their website or, you know, they stop offering it for free, you run the risk of, you know, having to pay for the pattern if you do go back and want to do it. I get so inspired by so many patterns that I see that I go ahead and get the pattern. If it's be if it's being offered for free, I go ahead and get it then. What doesn't matter which way I get it, whether it's printing it out, because I have a, a binder over here that I have with my patterns. And then I have a manila envelope with more patterns that I've printed out. Um, and it only cost me ink. But there has been instances to where um, when I go back and look for it. Like there was, some, there was one that I showed y'all. I can't remember which pattern it was. It was here recently. That when I. The, when I printed it and downloaded it, it was free. But now, oh, you know what? That was that, um, the crafts teacher, the uh, inter interwoven. What, th that's just one of the examples. Um, hers was free back when we were doing the crochet along. And I didn't do the crochet along then. I did it probably about four or five months later, the very first one that I showed y'all with the uh, retro stripes, the pale colors. Um, but now if I were to want to, to download those patterns, I'd actually have to pay the money for them. So if you think you might want to do something, go ahead, download it, print it, save it, however you can get it in your possession while it's free. Because Years later, when you actually go to make it, it might not be free anymore. Um, and the crochet world has exploded in the last 10 to 15 years to where a lot of these um, designers, except Mikey, I think Mikey's patterns are always going to be free. 
and, and he does a lot of the free patterns for your inspirations, but um, a lot of these designers are actually now wanting to get paid for their older work and they make them as a, um, you know, a purchase on Ravelry or Etsy, you know, all those. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those two days getting up at 6.30 and, and going, and I drove, we drove all the way to Edgefield, which is about, actually, I used to think it was like 40 minutes, but it turns out when I looked at my maps, it only, it says it was only like 31 or 35 minutes. So anyway, doing that twice a day for the last two days and sitting out there all day. It just, it makes you tired. And then packing up and then unpacking and resetting up and then packing up. And I didn't even unload the truck yesterday. When me and my husband got home, <laughs> we're like, yeah, no, it can wait till tomorrow. And we used to have a um, thrift store back in 2010, I think, 2010 to 2013. And we have a lot of DVDs, so we took some of those, and those were in the back of his truck, and all my yarn stuff was in the front, and it ended up drizzling this morning, so some of the boxes got a little wet, and I tarped them until my son could get home and help us unload. Sorry, I know, I can't quit yawning, but, uh. There was a little bitty gap to, in in the weather, in the forecast, where it said it wasn't going to rain for like 60 minutes. And, uh, you know, we're out there trying to get all of this, these boxes out of the truck before it starts raining again. And you know what? We got them out. Got, them, got the tables out and everything. And it hasn't rained again yet. <laughs> and that was about two hours ago, maybe? I don't somewhere around there and I'm kind of sitting over here stewing because I could have waited for we we could have waited for um our one of our sons to come up here and you know unload for us but it's all right in the end sorry again in the end it got you know it got done and today's it's like I said, with it being, you know, a rainy, cloudy day, and I'm this tired, I really want to go curl up in my, <laughs> in my recliner and maybe, you know, work on something, which brings me to my next thing. All right, um, let me put this beautiful little blanket to the side here. So, one of the things I was working on while I was at in Edgefield for the last couple days is I have um, in my yarn bag um, hang tight I'm going to grab it real quick this was my late mother's um, little tote bag and I love this little tote bag she carried it everywhere because you know I took care of her and, and, and took her to and from doctor's appointments and everything all the time and this was her little bag that she toted all of her stuff in. You know, she wasn't a purse person. My grandmother, the one that I am so much like, she was a purse person. And honestly, my grandmother's purses were almost this big. I'm not kidding you. My grandmother, whoo, she was a card and a half. But so what I do is usually, and I'm going to show you, you know, I just have little random small pieces of um, yarn balls, you know. And I call it my scrap bag. And so what I do is I just make up little grainy squares, you know, when I'm bored or, or if I get enough little balls in here, I will take it to keep myself busy. If I don't have a current project going, you know, I kind of just make all these random little, um, little granny squares. And I like to do the solid grannies because I just, that's my preference. Um, I like the look, I like the, the aesthetic, I like the way, now a holy granny is just as warm as a solid granny, so I'm, that's not my purpose, it's just a personal preference, you know, I, I, I like the solid granny look, 
So I have all these bag, this bag of all these little different, um, you know, granny squares, and they are three rows. The, only, the reason why they're only three rows is because if I go to join them later in a different project, or when I go to join them as a project, I can do that fourth row and then join as you go. You know, that way it's I can keep it. Because these are going to be very random and eclectic, and I just, I just have all kind of different. I mean, I have white. I have looks like a Karen Jumbo. Um, so this is how I cake them. I put my thing in the middle, so I'm trying to see. Hang tight. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's like a coral color, but that is literally the name, coral. And, you know, I have, uh, that's actually one of the bigger ones. Now, if you'll see, I have these as well that I haven't put in the bag because my bag is getting quite full. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but it's, it's getting quite full. I am working on um, getting through these. But I just like to have it, you know, just just so I can work on it in random times and it's not something that requires my attention. It's not a, to me, it's not a whip. It is just something that I keep on hand um, so that I can work on and not be overly bored if I don't have a project going or if I can't. You've, I know I cannot be the only one that says, what do I work on next? You know, <laughs> I can't be the only one. So, on those times, and I, I don't feel like doing one of my tried and true patterns, because let me tell you, I learned when I was pricing all my stuff, I learned just how much I do crochet and knit. I had a lot of stuff for sale. If I had sold everything at only yarn cost, I probably would have made two grand easily in all the stuff that I had made. I had my knit hand towels, my crochet hot pad, my little flower hot pads. Now these I didn't take because um, I haven't set the colors in those, but the ones like this. Um, I did, I had my cast iron um, handle holders, you know, the, the hand, um, the cast iron pan holders <laughs> I can't think of the name of running but you know what I mean the little things you slide over your cast iron pans to where you don't burn your hand my ice pop hand savers um, which is basically a little cotton sleeve um, the car seat size car seat carrier baby blankets uh, and I didn't even take all of those. I have a ton in these little bins behind me that I didn't take. Um, I took about five or six Afghans, which the only two that I showed was the unicorn, the heart sprinkle unicorn, corner to corner, and then that peppermint. I actually had a lady say that, you know, they may come back for that. But usually when they say that, you, you know that they're not coming back. Um, but her husband wasn't interested in looking at any of my stuff, but after she had bought, um, I think she bought a hand towel and she went to go get in her truck. She got back out and come and asked me about the, um, the peppermint throw or Afghan. And she's like, my husband was wanting me to ask because he likes it maybe for possibly getting it for his mom. And I said, okay, you know. She's like, well, we're going to go on down. Now, mind you, this thing is miles long, and it takes 30 minutes probably to drive from one end to the other without all the normal yard sale traffic. But so I honestly didn't expect them. I hoped to see them again, but I, I didn't really expect them back. But anyway, so... I took all these things and they didn't, you know, they, they I, I sold a couple hand towels, um, 
my woven key change, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, that I wove on my ankle loom. And I do want to show y'all that. Um, I may go ahead and do a whole video on it. I have it sitting up there. I haven't woven on it in almost a year. Um, yeah, it's been a long minute. So I, I wouldn't mind breaking it back out. And, and I use um, crochet threads to to um, weave. So I'll show you. I'll show you all that in a minute. But anyway, so going back to this. Um, have y'all done anything like this? I mean, just, you know, have just extra balls. Now, these are kind of big to put in a scrap, in my scrap, um, bag. Because usually I'll do it when they get about yay big. You know, my cakes, they're, they're probably about two to three ounces, you know. Um, these probably, on average, five to seven ounces or seven to 10 ounce. I mean, you know, a lot of these are 14 to 16 ounce balls that I used in a project. And these are just what was left. Um, so it's still substantial enough to where I could possibly add them in a blanket together without making squares. Because as I found out the other day, um, in fact, I will show you. I had a ball about this size so this is what i'm guessing might be about three ounces it made now this was um the ball was about this size but it was pink panther uh it was sorry ah red heart pink panther i believe is the colorway of that particular yarn and it made two three, six, so it made seven squares. So if a ball this size made seven squares, imagine what these big heifers behind me would make. I would never finish those little squares. So, um, I do think that I may try to come up with something else. If y'all have any ideas, leave me a comment below. Um, I do like corner to corner. Um, I do like the block stitch. But if you have some patterns, you know, that would really use um, a, a good bit of these kind of colors. And I have over here on my rack beside this little pretty little freebie that I got. I have chocolate brown. I have royal blue. I have gray. I have another red. I have. Tan, I have yellow, I have um, like a creamy color. So I have, I, I want to get these partials, these cakes um, used up before I do any more of my schemes because I'm trying to be very good and only work out of my stash. I do have an order coming. Um, to finish up my Moogly rainbow squares because they finally got the, the color gray in that I need from Hobie. Um, it's been out of stock for a minute. So now that it's it's back in stock, I ordered it the other day. And so I'll be able to get one more blanket knocked out. Um, and I'm excited because I really do. I, I'm really excited to see that blanket come together. Um, and I'll show you the, the squares for that. I'll just show you a quick little, um, like, this, 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 just to give you an idea. Um, I'm waiting for that to come in, and when that comes in, I'll get that done. Because um, that is a whip, and I don't, I've said many times on here, usually I only have one knit and one crochet whip at any given time. Um. And I don't count those little squares in my mom's bag. I really don't count those as <laughs> whips. But anyway, so for somebody who is so tired and said that I was just going to come on and make a quick video, I'm sorry. <laughs> this isn't quite as quick as I thought it would be. And I'm feeling it because 
I've tried not to yawn so much in y'all's little faces, um, because that's not attractive at all. But, so remember I told you I was going to show you the woven things that I made on my Inca loom? This, I'm going to try to get up really close. And I hope, you know what I might do? I might stand behind the camera so I can see it and tell when it's in focus so I can show y'all these pretty little patterns. Now, um, like I said, these were woven a long time ago and I haven't, I haven't worked on my ankle loom at least a year, maybe more. But basically what I did is, when I wove a big long strand, I would cut them and make keychains out of them. Now, my initial idea was just a short little keychain that you could kind of put on your finger, right? And carry your keys. Well, since I've made these, um, I've seen a lot of people, like my niece for one, she has keychains that fit on her wrist. You know, so she can just slap her finger, her hand in, and carry her keys with her. So I may, I may, when I when I do that video to show y'all my ankle loom and and how I weave on it, I may do that with that one. I, I will have to buy some more keychain pieces. Now these I got off Amazon. Um, if y'all are interested, let me know, and I can post the the link to. Um, but just basically, it's just a little claw that you um, clip on, and it grabs the fabric. So I'm going to get up and get behind the camera and show y'all all these lovely little things. So you can kind of see the, um, the design. Isn't that pretty? Now, this one is... Um, I, I do love rainbows. It doesn't represent pride unless you want it to. Um, and then I had this one, which I made for, I strung this one up for a co-worker because his lady loved, um, let me see if I can get that in focus. She loved um, Florida State Seminoles. So he had asked me to make that for her. And I had made him one with Georgia Bulldog, with the words Georgia Bulldog. And then when I, as I was stringing it up, I thought, well, why not make a different kind of Georgia Bulldog for those who like Georgia but may not want to pay the price I would have to charge to do the words again. So I made this one. And then... This one was um, kind of a nod to my Cherokee lineage because I love these colors. And I have one in brown with a brown background with these, and I love it. Now, this was one of my most popular things that I sold because um, I had like 10 of those, and I only have one left. They didn't sell yesterday, but, you know, I've... I've it's been a couple of years since I've had these. So this one is a, um, this isn't straight weaving. Now this is called card weaving to where you can get those kind of designs. And I love doing this. These require um, swivels and stuff, which as a fisherman or fisherwoman, <laughs> I have them. And so it, it makes it a lot easier. And then this one, I have this purple version, and then I had a pink version, and I made my son's um, husky a collar and um, leash out of those. And so what what I did on like with this, I have you see I had the frayed end, and then I have a solid closed end one. Or the keychain for this one because when you get to the end you don't want to waste that so you could make you know the keychain out of that and then the other one 
is an American flag pattern, and I'm hoping, I'm trying to, yeah, there we go, oops, that's better, <laughs> I had it upside down, so this one was a really good, fun favorite of mine, too, um, but like I said, I, I made these, and I had to take a break, because, oh, for one, I weave so tight, now, if you know anything about weaving on a loom, you have a, a, a tension paddle. Well, this little ankle loom, and, and I'll show y'all later, but um, it's probably, I can't remember. I got it off uh, a yard sale site or a market place i don't i don't know it's been so long i can't even remember but i think i paid 20 30 bucks for it it's not a little mini inkle loom it's it's a decent sized little thing it's still portable but it uh i don't want to i didn't want to break it and i was using it so much i was so scared that i would warp it before i could alter it and I haven't altered it yet. So basically, um, I'm going to use it at least one more time so I can show y'all in a video. And then I may show you, you know, what I think I might do to alter it. Because it would be just about, about drilling and, you know, using a, um, a long bolt and, and nut as an adjustable paddle. Because this one has a, um, a, an adjustable tension because this one has a paddle tension. And the paddle tension is kind of sitting crooked after the years I've used the, the, the loom. So, it is what it is. And hopefully I can get it altered. But I'll, I'll string it up at least once. And it might not be the next video. It might be a couple videos from now that, that I do that. Um... And I also have, like I said, I have that Centro that I want to try and post a video on too. So those are some things that, that you can look forward to th that might be coming out here soon. But for now, I'm going to get off here and go relax and just kind of veg out the rest of the day. I hope y'all have a great afternoon and I will see you later. Bye.